Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I wanna talk about digital signatures. Uh, we're gonna be diving into more sensitive subjects such as crypto and uh, you know dark web, stuff like this. Uh, subjects that require much more attention to InfoSec and OPSEC. A wrong move could you know blow someone's anonymity or make, uh, or, or what's the word for this? Someone could lose. Bitcoin or crypto in general, and that's bad. Um, so yeah, when we go about installing apps in our computers, we really wanna make sure that what we're installing is what we believe we're installing. So there's a whole bunch of attacks that we could be subject to when we're a target. Uh, one of them is, say, the website in question where we're downloading Electrum in the context of Bitcoin, for instance. Say the website is compromised, uh, well, we might be downloading the Electrum wallet thinking that it's Electrum, but really it's an app that someone has, you know, hacked together that really looks like Electrum. But in reality, that app is stealing our, you know, seed material, our private keys. And that's really bad. Uh, in the context of anonymity, say you're downloading the Tor browser or you're downloading Tails, uh, Tails OS uh, to actually browse through the darknet. Well, if someone has hacked together that thing you're downloading, believing it's Tails or the Tor browser, and it's not, well, you could be leaking your identity. So that is really critical. Now, thankfully, digital signatures really help out in this regard. Uh, say you trust a developer, say you trust me. Uh, having a look at the episode uh, that I you know, published a while back on how to clean uninstall macOS apps, well, I created this little script. And that little script, uh, actually shipped with a PGP signature along its side. Now, some of you may have wondered what that was, uh, and that is the subject of today's episode. Uh, PGP signatures are a way for me to sign a specific file, in this case, app-cleaner.sh, so sign it, and, and then you guys at your end can download my PGP public key and verify it, more on this in a second, and compare the signature with the file and if they match, you know that I signed the file. Someone cannot hack my server and then change the file because it won't match with the signature anymore. And in the context of InfoSec and OPSEC, when we, uh, you know, as developers, uh, set up our key ring, so that's uh, in the world of GNUPG, that's where we put our private keys and our public keys. Well, there are ways to actually put the private key on a little hardware device, uh, this here is a UB key. So I actually store my private keys on this and uh, manage them on a computer that is cold, meaning it's not connected to the internet and it's read only. More on this in a future episode on the subject. But what I mean here is I take great care protecting my private keys to make sure that it is very, very hard for someone to hijack my cryptographic identity. And that means that when I sign files like I've done here, uh, well, you guys can be pretty certain if you do things right, that I actually wrote it. Now, by the way, I would highly recommend in the context of files such as appcleaner.sh, let's open it in Visual Studio Code, I would highly recommend to always audit code when you can. So in the context of this script here, if you know how to write scripts, uh, well, you can actually quite quickly audit that code, it's like 125 lines. But what about Veracrypt? Uh, and what about the Tor browser? Well, those projects are very intricate. They're very elaborate. They have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lines of code. It's quite impossible for us users to review the whole code. And that means that we have to trust its authors. And thankfully, in the context of privacy conscious software, such as Veracrypt and Tor, each build built by the developer uh, has a PGP signature along its side that we can use to verify the integrity of the file that we're downloading. So if I was to download Veracrypt for my Mac, I could compare the file with its PGP signature and use uh, a whole bunch of tricks that I'll show you in a second to make sure that those match and that the PGP key that was used to sign the material here uh, actually belongs to who we believe it does. This is kind of complicated. Anyhow, I hope you're still following. Okay, um, okay. 
So uh, how to verify PGP digital signatures using GNUPG? Uh, as usual, I kind of give you guys a lot of context. Wow, okay. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have brew on your computer. So you can know by typing brew, dash dash version, boom, and I have version 3.0.9. If you guys followed some of my past episodes, good chances are that you have brew. If you don't, uh, you just have to copy paste this here, run that piece of code, and uh, it will take a few minutes and you're all set. Uh, the next stage here is you wanna run uh, brew analytics off just to make sure that analytics is disabled in homebrew. And last but not least, uh, install GNUPG. If you're on Mac, pretty much everything I'm seeing here will likely work as well, but you wanna make sure that you install GNUPG on your uh, Linux distro, and that would be using you know YUM or APT. I'll be creating more Linux content in the future, by the way, stay tuned. Um, but then if we wanna make sure that GPG is installed, uh, GNUPG, I should have said, well, uh, to run GNUPG, we use the GPG command, and again, with version, we can see that it is installed. Okay, uh, now the first thing that we wanna do when we wanna verify a digital signature is import the public key of the signer. Uh, so in the context of, for instance, uh, the app.cleaner.sh uh, app dash, uh, I included alongside the PGB signature and my public key. Uh, so let's say we download this. And by the way, I already have uh, when we ran it in Visual Studio Code, but then I can download its PGP signature as well. And, uh, you know, might as well download its uh, PGP public key, but I'll wait just for a second here. Um, the first thing that we wanna do is import the signer's public key. Uh, now, how does this work? Well, in the context of my own work, as you saw, I often include it alongside here or it's also included in the footer of sanudson.com. So you can just go about downloading this. Uh, another way to do this is using a key server. So some people will tend to share their key ID, so their public key ID, and then we can you know, leverage uh, a key server, this one here is my favorite, to download the actual uh, pub key. So if I run this here, uh, little snitch will pop up. I can tell it to allow this for 10 minutes. Uh, again, I could also allow this forever, but I like, you know, and as I can see here, unchanged, uh, you guys would probably see imported uh, if my key wasn't in your key ring yet, but in this case it was, so it says unchanged, but we're good. That means that the key is now there. Another way of doing this is using a public key URL. And uh, the way to do this is to use curl. Curl is an app to download uh, a website essentially or a file. Uh, and then if we go here again uh, and we right click on the public key, copy link, boop. Uh, next up, we wanna pipe the output of the curl command to gpg uh, dash dash import, enter, and then we'll allow this again. And uh, it will still say unchanged because the key was already there, but that allowed us to either download it through a key server or directly to through a file. Uh, that is hosted in this case on sunnewson.com. If we look at Veracrypt, uh, we can see that the public key is here. So we could use curl for this as well. Uh, and let's do this actually. So if I type curl and I right click here, copy link location, and then I want to pipe it to gpg dash dash import, enter, and then allow it. It's idrix.fr. Yep. Okay. Enter unchanged. I already had the key. So we're all set. So now in our key ring, and by the way, if you type GPG dash uh, K, that shows you the content of your key ring. So I have John from the episode on how to sign and encrypt messages using GNUPG. I have, this is mine actually, and then I have Veracrypt team. Uh, so that's the signing key when uh, that, that Veracrypt uses to sign releases here. Okay. So now that we've done that, uh, what if we wanna verify a signed message? Uh, so recently you may have seen this uh, in my donation campaign, but if you go down here, uh, there's Libra Pay, but there's also Crypto Links. Uh, now, what if someone would hack my website and replace those addresses with their own? That would be a way to steal uh, your donations. Uh, so for the more advanced user here, that may be you know, donating a more significant amount, 
I included a PGP signature. So let's go about downloading that signature here. Okay, so if I go to my downloads folder and have a look, we now have donate uh, Bitcoin dot ASC. And if we look at the content of that file, well, we can see that there that file here uh, includes a signed message, which is the address. And if I use search, we can see that they match. And then there's a signature. So how can we make sure that I actually signed this, that the signature that we're seeing here belongs to me? Well, that's really straightforward. Once the file is downloaded and you're in the actual path uh, using the terminal, you can run, whoops, sorry, I have to copy this here again. If you copy paste this here, enter, uh, we see good signature from Sun Knudsen, blah, 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 which actually made me realize that we skipped a really important step because clearly someone who's able to hijack this page could clearly also fake the PGP public key and fake the footer here. So how do you make sure that that fingerprint here is mine? Uh, so first things first, in order to see the fingerprint, this here is the command that you guys would want to run and that will list my fingerprint. So that fingerprint here, well, how can you know that that is my cryptographic identity fingerprint. Uh, well, I included an example here that actually brings us to the episode uh, on how to encrypt and sign emails, well, messages, but emails. Uh, and here's how I tend to do it. Uh, I tend to publish, uh, as you may have seen here in the footer, my fingerprint. And then I tend, whoops, and then I also tend to publish uh, that same identical fingerprint on different websites. So this is it on GitHub and this is it on YouTube. What that means is if someone wanted to steal my cryptographic identity and spoof it so that you guys don't know uh, what my actual fingerprint is, they would have to hack my YouTube account, GitHub account, and my website, which is very unlikely because they all have at, you know, at least uh, two-factor authentication or more. Uh, so that is a way for you guys to know that that fingerprint belongs to me. Another way of doing this uh, is through a web of trust. Uh, what a web of trust is, is it's essentially a bunch of people that will co-sign each other's key, uh, each other's uh, public key. So that means that, for instance, if you trust another, uh, you know, privacy and security researcher and that researcher has signed my public key, by extension, you know that that person extended their trust to me, so you can likely trust me. So that's a web of trust. I'll be discussing this in a future episode. Uh, but for today, uh, let's have a look at how to do what I just mentioned in the context of Veracrypt. So Veracrypt, if we type gpg-key to go in our key ring, uh, by the way, a key ring is essentially a file on your computer that includes all public and private keys. Uh, well, we can have a look at you know, this ID here. So if I type this, boom, we can see that uh, Veracrypt here. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let, let, let's do this another way. If I type uh, GPG thing, whoa, fingerprint, uh, and then put the ID, boom, this is the fingerprint that is associated to that key we downloaded. But is that key what, is that key the actual Veracrypt key? How can we know? Well, uh, there are no instructions here to help us, you know, figure this out. What I tend to do is I just use DuckDuckGo and I search for the key in question and then I see, well, oh wow, okay, so there's a whole bunch of different publications here and uh, okay, and then looking at some more. Um, oh, that's interesting. So GitHub, clearly that's, you know, a well-protected uh, thing, uh, Idrassi, he's the actual author of Veracrypt. And if we go down here, we'll see that, uh, again, it says that it was signed with, you know, a public key that has this uh, fingerprint. So I think you get the gist. Uh, you wanna always double check, triple check, uh, and make sure that a key here is actually the right, like it's actually associated to the person that you believe is you know, creating the software. Once this is done, we can go about downloading Veracrypt and we'll be pretty sure that, you know, if we go and download this Mac version and compare it with the PGP signature, it will match. 
But how does this work? Uh, we've just done it here. If we go back a few steps, uh, we've just done it here in the context of, you know, assigned message. But what about assigned file? Uh, well, assigned file is actually pretty simple as well. So if we look at the downloads folder, I have, you know, app-cleaner.sh. Uh, the way it's done for files is uh, using what we call a detached signature. So uh, the file can be quite big and the signature is always quite small. It's a cryptographic signature. Uh, so if I download the file, uh, you also want to download the detached signature and save it in the same folder. So now we have app-cleaner.sh and we also have the signature. Um, and I wonder, actually, yeah, I guess that will be fine. Curious if my picture in picture will be over this, but I, I think it's good. Uh, and then we just want to run this uh, inside the downloads folder. And again, good signature from Sun and uh, the fingerprint we confirmed is actually mine. So from that point forward, uh, you know that if you use uh, appcleaner.sh, uh, well, it's me who wrote it. So if you trust me, you can run that file and uh, be safe. So uh, as you can imagine, when you start installing, you know, crypto wallets, uh, things such as Tor, you start downloading uh, Tails OS uh, images to put them on a USB stick and run, you know, a more anonymous operating system. Well, you really want to make sure that what you're downloading is actually uh, legit, and that is done through digital signatures. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, that's one of the fundamentals that we're going to be using more and more. Um, as always, smash that like button uh, and drop a comment. It's always good for the algorithm. By the way, I noticed that very few of you have the bell uh, and notifications on. And actually getting a few of you to watch an episode when it's published can give it a pretty good organic push. I know not all of you uh, mentioned in the comments that you can donate. Those of you who can, that's always very appreciated. Uh, but helping you know push that content through organic reach, that is fabulous. Um, yeah, so that's all I have for you today. Stay tuned for more episodes coming. I have so much, so much stuff that I'm looking forward to share. Take care. Bye.